Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuri Nilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha One who offers me respect but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist never attains peace of mind because of his inimical behavior toward other living entities. Upward, in this verse, two phrases, Bhuteshu, Badhavai Rasya, inimical toward others, and Dvishatah, Parakaye, envious of another's body, are significant. One who is envious of or inimical toward others never experiences any happiness. A devotee's vision, therefore, must be perfect. He should ignore bodily distinctions and should see only the presence of the part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and the Lord himself in his plenary expansions as super-soul. That is the vision of a pure devotee. The bodily expression of a particular type of living entity is always ignored by the devotee. It is expressed herein that the Lord is always eager to deliver the conditioned souls who have been encaged within material bodies. Devotees are expected to carry the message or desire of the Lord to such conditioned souls and enlighten them with Krishna consciousness. Thus they may be elevated to transcendental spiritual life and the mission of their lives will be successful. Of course this is not possible for living entities who are lower than human beings, but in human society it is feasible that all living entities can be enlightened with Krishna consciousness. Even living entities who are lower than, the, than human can be raised to Krishna consciousness by other methods. For example, Shivananda Singh, a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, delivered a dog by giving, feeding him prasad. Distribution of prasad or remnants of foodstuffs offered to the Lord, even to the ignorant masses of people and to animals, gives such living entities the chance for elevation to Krishna consciousness. Factually, it happened that the same dog, when met by Lord Chaitanya at Puri, was liberated from the material condition. It is specially mentioned here that a devotee must be free from all violence, jiva himsa. Lord Chaitanya has recommended that a devotee not commit violence to any living entity. Sometimes the question is raised that since vegetables also have life and devotees take vegetable foodstuffs, isn't that violence? Firstly, however, taking some leaves, twigs or fruit from a tree or plant does not kill the plant. Besides that, jiva himsa, oh, I misread, I saw violence, jeev hingsa, but it's free from all violence, jeev ahingsa. Means that since every living entity has to pass through a particular type of body, according to his past karma, although every living entity is eternal, he should not be disturbed in his gradual evolution. A devotee has to execute the principles of devotional service exactly as they are, and he must know that however insignificant a living entity may be, the Lord is present within him, a devotee must realize this universal presence of the Lord. It's a similar verse in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam. Acharyeva hare puja syaf shatayahate natad bhakti shu chanye shu sabhakta prakrita smitaha. That one who worships the deity of the Lord, Acharyam eva hare. With even with great faith, but doesn't recognize or give proper respect to devotees or others, is called a materialistic devotee. And here it's stated that Krishna is not pleased with such a person. How he's doing the puja very nicely. Seems like that. And he thinks I'm doing I'm pleasing the Lord, but the Lord is not pleased. He says himself, while describing to Uddhava the system or how to worship him, Krishna is describing, he says Madhbhakta puja bhadika. That the worship of my devotee is even more important than the worship of myself. So it's quite common in the. We see in our Krishna conscious movement, it's quite common that people they claim 
you know, to be devotees, and especially Prabhupada, who is promoting, yeah, we're really into Prabhupada, but they, they, they're against all other devotees except those who agree with their perverted outlook on life. And they're better, they're better known for blaspheming others than for praising Krishna. So what kind of devotee is that? It's their main thing, is to find out the faults, real or imagined, of others. And amplify them as loudly as possible. But this cannot please Krishna. From our perspective, there may be various faults, but we have to see what is Krishna's perspective and what is Prabhupada's perspective. And what is Prabhupada's position compared to our position? It's, it's, Prabhupada would correct his disciples, but he didn't give blanket permission to Blanket permission, you know what that means? It means it means without any conditions. Permission without any conditions. So that everyone is just authorized to criticize everyone else. <clears throat> it's become quite a common thing, you see. Even someone who's very junior they they know all the faults of others which they but they they're not permitted to see actually even they have a whole sampradaya local headquarters in bangalore where they train people up from the beginning like that but according to shastram tradition those who are Senior to you, they're called guru, they're to be respected. In Shastra, it's stated, it's there in Hari Bhakti Vilas, that even if, even if your guru mistreats you and is harsh with you, you should, you should offer respect, call him to the house, offer obeisances, and it's still guru. He doesn't say that if he speaks wrong philosophy or engages in sinful behavior, that you should go on respecting him as guru. But if if you think, it, or even from the external point of view, he, he may appear to be very harsh, or unreasonable, still that respect has to be there. So one should not be Envious of others, we also we also find that there are, there are religious systems by the whole influence of Kali Yoga, that religious systems that appeal to the envious or, or, or bolster the bolster. You know what that word means, either. That uh, it strengthens. The envious nature of others, that's appealing to others. This fanatical kind of religions in which people say, only you only have to be in this one, otherwise you go to hell. And everyone else burns in hell, and then they feel great satisfaction from thinking everyone else is going to burn in hell except me and a few others. So they... they this uh, and, and such religions, they're engaged in slaughter of animals. They think it's it's quite all right. We kill millions of animals. So these religions they're based on envy. Sometimes we wonder why why don't more people take to Krishna consciousness? Well because people prefer some in Kali Yoga people they don't want the truth. They want cheating. And if there's some cheating religion where they say you can you can eat whatever you like you kill animals, and then they think, well, that's all right, that's good. 
and they insist. They think that they actually think it's sinful to promote vegetarianism. It's against the principles of our religion. So, what will you speak to such people? They're not interested in truth. Not want to speak of the absolute truth. They're not even interested in worldly truth or relative truth. You showed me that video. That there's there's evidence accepted by all scholars that the, the early part of the Bible, the first five books of the Bible, which are according to the biblical tradition all written by Moses, they're not, because they're all written in a different style. Moses dies in one of them. Oh, it's not impossible for them. They don't know that. Actually. The biblical scholars don't know that, but it's possible for the writer also to write that, because if he's Trikalagya, he can also say like that. But they don't know any of these things. So when, when he asked that, uh, that spiritual leaders, spiritual leaders, uh, well, what do you think of this accusation that that's written by different men? Rubbish, that was his immediate reply. There's no, no consideration of the evidence, no reply to it, no discussion of philosophy. When I was a child, I was brought up with all this kind of stuff, that you have to believe in the Bible, or you go to hell. I thought, wait a minute, there's other people say that too. They say that in Islam also. And then if you, if you don't believe in the Catholic Church, you go to hell. And if the other side, they say, if you don't believe in the Protestant Church, they're all saying the same thing. Which one should I follow? I just happen to be born in a Catholic family. Does that mean I'm right? I mean, all the others are all going to hell, they're all wrong. So, if people are a little bit more intelligent, then, they can, then they're turned off by it. Like that, that narrator of that program was slightly intelligent. He was intelligent enough to have doubts, but he couldn't get beyond the doubts. He, he, all he could see was, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open for what? Brahm Pramad Vipralipsa Karana Pada. <laughs> so, you know that means Brahm Pramad Vipralipsa Karana Pada. It's the four defects of the conditioned souls. By which keeping your eyes open and simply uh, believing what you see is full of defects because Brahm means the illusion of accepting something to be which it isn't. You see something. <coughs> but it isn't. The classic example of Brahm is the Sarpa Rajunyan, that you see a rope and you mistake it to be a snake. So that's the first you see. And you'll, you'll walk outside in the courtyard and go running back inside and tell, Amma, there's a snake in the courtyard. And you say, no, it's just some rope we have. So, don't believe your Brahm. Pramad, this uh, is a kind of, Pramad means kind of madness by which one is, uh, accepts things not just out of a sensory sense, not out of sensory being wrong, but conceptual wrongness. You want to believe what is wrong. Then uh, vipralipsa, cheating, you are cheating yourself and others. Karnapata, in perfect senses. So it's very difficult. Here with the Prabhupada is talking about the need to preach Krishna consciousness. But it's very difficult to preach because people, they don't, they're not interested in truth. People are not sincere. Prabhupada said these books will appeal to sincere people. But actually that just shows how many people in the world are sincere, not very many. Because we're distributing so many books. And you think by distributing books that surely so many people will take to Krishna consciousness because it's everything is so clear. 
but people are deliberately keeping themselves in, in darkness. They don't want to know what is truth. Uh, we saw that movie I was showing you, who wrote the Bible. The people, they, they don't want to discuss just what would, you know, that, there was that Jewish man, I asked, what do you think of the accusation that people have, have uh, different people have written the Bible? I mean, with our knowledge in Krishna Kondi, we wouldn't, we can answer the questions better than the Jews or the Christians can actually. We could, we could give, we could give them, we could help them in their philosophical department. <laughs> but the, the thing is, they don't really have any philosophical department. I mean, the whole thing is, it's very weak right from the beginning. So all he said, without offering any explanation, just that, well, I think they're very unfortunate. That's all. There's nothing to say. They just, they, their philosophy is that you should have blind faith. That's as far as their philosophy goes. You should just have blind That's what they say. You just believe. That's all. And if you ask why, then they say, well, you're possessed by the devil. So they spoke of the age of enlightenment in the Western world. But actually it's, it's religion has gone on in a non-enlightened way. In some ways the, the age of enlightenment, we could welcome it. When they, they stop blindly believing the Bible and question it. So we're ready for that. Because, yes, question. It's, we, we find in the Vedic scriptures... Which I, I, I don't think you'll find in these Abrahamic scriptures. It's all based on question, and Abrahamic means the scriptures of the religions which have their source in the, the, the peoples who came from Abraham. That means the Jews and the Muslims, and by extension, the Christians also, because Jesus was also a Jew. So. They don't have this. It's all based on question and answer to try to understand the truth philosophically. But it's it's just believe or you'll go to hell. It's for shudras. It's just it's just for people with no brains. That's all. Just it's, it's just instills fear. That's how you deal with a, with a shudra. You don't you do it. If you do it, you'll get uh, some reward. If you don't do it, you'll get beaten. That's all. Argument and advachana. In Bhagavatam, that's also. What is that? Laguro Yata. Balaram says that about the Kauravas. It's speaking such nonsense. The only thing to do is beat you with a stick. <laughs> so, when they were saying that Krishna, the Yadavas, they're only allowed to use the princely, the royal insignia because we allow them to. He said, well, wait a minute, even Indra, he's, he's a king because Krishna allows him to. And you're saying Krishna is only a king because we allow him to. So what is that? Naguho Pashavan. I can't remember. It's just the only thing we can say for such people who have such, such a stupid idea is that they should be beaten with a stick like, a, like an animal. <laughs> So, this is very low. We have that in the Vedas also, this low level. That do good, do punya karma, and you'll go to heaven and enjoy it. Uh, but you have to be careful of your sinful activities, otherwise you'll suffer. But that's uh, beginning with the Upanishads, that's, uh, which is far below. Of course, it's support to, but it's not... It's not on the level of Srimad Bhagavatam. So that's that's already that concept, going beyond that. It's simple reward and punishment. It's, uh, but most people of the world are envious because that is the nature of this material world. The people are here because of envy of the Supreme Lord which extends to all others. So, especially in Kali Yuga, that expands, and even the so-called religions are actually based on envy. Although they talk of God's peace and God's love, but they have no idea of what is love. 
their idea God loves me therefore he gives me opportunities to defeat my enemies and kill animals so he can eat them and that's what they think love is because they, their concept of God God the Father and the Father feeds you so you'll see they'll come out of the church and go home and eat some meat so where is the love? Love begins with knowledge. You can't love someone unless you know them. That's why there's no love in the material world, because we, we say, I love, but it's only love for the body. But the actual person is the soul. So they're saying, I, I love you, well, it means I'm attracted to your body. I lust after you. So even they say, well, we love all living beings, but that you can't, you can't love unless you know. So. In Bhagavad Gita, we begin with the knowledge of who we are. So even people talk about bhakti, we're doing bhakti. But without knowledge of who we are and who Bhagavan is, then there's no meaning to bhakti. How can Bhakti, they say, means love. That's true. How can you love unless you know who someone is? But we don't know. We think, I am the body and all these are other bodies and our, our love is expressed by building hospitals and so living beings. But that you can't, you can't love unless you know. So in Bhagavad Gita we begin with the knowledge of who we are. So even people talk about bhakti, we're doing bhakti. But without knowledge of who we are and who Bhagavan is, then there's no meaning to bhakti. How can bhakti, they say, means love. That's true. How can you love unless you know who someone is? They're, but we don't know. We think, I am the body and all these are other bodies and our, our love is expressed by building hospitals and schools and feeding the poor. But that, that's not love. That is a, a reflection of love. That's not actual love. So there's no question of them. And these ridiculous interfaith conferences they have and they're talking about religion. They haven't got the faintest idea who God is and they don't even ask the question. And faith means what? Interfaith means faith in God. But they don't even have any idea who God is and they don't even think of discussing it. It's so dull-headed. <laughs> faith in God. They know about faith. You have to believe in God. Faith in what? And they never discuss what do they mean by God? And they are they even if you want to discuss, they, they'll say, well, you can't, you can't understand. And what are you going to believe in if you can't understand? It's just ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous in all these so-called religions. So what's the solution? Prabhupada discusses here. Preaching Krishna consciousness. Yeah, like I was saying, actually, you know, we're distributing so many books, people should take to it, but they're dull-headed. They read this book, but you know, what else are they reading? They're reading all kinds of stupid magazines and newspapers and watching TV. And for so many people, they, they, they may read, but it doesn't click. They take it as just someone. They're so much used to this mayavad of thinking, well, every, everything's just all one opinion, and every, every everyone's opinion is just a different opinion, and any opinion. And, this opinion, that opinion. And this again, from the beginning, makes people dull-headed. They can't. There's no discrimination of what is right and wrong. Everything's just someone else's opinion. That's all. They have no. They have no understanding of of what are the actual principles. What is right? What is wrong? What should be done? What should not be done? For them, it's just well, whatever opinion. So, even though they, they're getting these books, people are very dull-headed. Nevertheless, we have to go on distributing them. And they, they will have their effect, and they, they are having their effect. Prabhupada is very clear in all his books of establishing that what is the nature of the jiva? What is the nature of Bhagawan? What is the relationship? What is the condition of modern society? What a mess! 
What a big mess. Now this Bhagavatam, this is spoken in Sudha Goswami to the Shonak and other rishis. Shonak was astonished to hear that some man dressed as a king was beating a bull. They were astonished. How could that happen? But now you have the modern leaders, they're, they're building slaughterhouses and they're having a big ceremony and saying, oh, very good. This is progress for the nation. They can't imagine that there's, there's no king. It's just not imaginable. How can there be no king? And how can there be Varnashrams? How can there be society without a king? And how does things go on? Then all the people who are less than Shudras get together and they choose someone. And then they, they enact, they make... And what about laws then? Well, they just make up their own laws. They don't follow Manu. I mean, they couldn't imagine that there's such a condition in society. And they make, they make laws regulating the slaughterhouses. That, you know, so that you can kill the animals humanely, which they don't follow. I mean, they have the laws they don't follow. And the, the meat and wine are sold openly. Yeah. And so many things. They couldn't imagine. It's beyond their imagination. But in the modern society, we're... We, are, we accept this as normal. In India today, it's just accepted as normal that there should be cow slaughter. It's accepted as normal that, the, which even one generation ago wasn't there, young boys and young girls walk in the street together. Did you see that when you were young? No. Still not so much in Salem, but it's come. So these things are all... Horrible, it's a crazy society. I mean, it, in this crazy society, and maybe the most crazy thing is that people are getting Prabhupada's books and they're still not the solution to all their problems, they're still not taking it up. They think it's just. But then, if you see some cheetah comes, one big cheetah came here a few days ago, he's big in everywhere. It's so big you can hardly get in the car. Then they'd have special suspension in the car. <laughs> He's a very big swami. And so many people go, for what? What is his contribution to human society? What is his spiritual contribution? Just somehow or other he's advertised swami. I mean, as you're saying, he has a little mystic power here. He heals people, maybe. Maybe it's rigged, maybe it's real, we don't know. But, but what is the actual benefit? And these books, they, they have all solutions to all problems at all levels in human society at all times, past, present and future. Well, Prabhupada said that if the time will come when people will appreciate these books. So it's our duty to go on distributing them. And some people, they they take it up immediately. That Manoj, he was saying, he, he told me he gave one book to one student of his in his college and he immediately, immediately took it up. But most people dull-headed. Therefore, for, for living entities who are lower than human, they can be raised to Krishna consciousness by other methods. And Prabhupada's given the example of prasad distribution. It gives living entities the chance for elevation to Krishna consciousness. So all these things have to go on. Book distribution, prasad distribution. We see how prasad distribution changes people. It's their, their attitude changes. Public, Harinam, there are so many things to do. And gradually, gradually, the, the, the people become purified and then they can begin to understand what is the value of this Krishna consciousness. 
So, all these activities should go on. So, go on. Distributing books, distributing prasad, Harinam, teaching the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. You have your TV program. You tell, tell the people all these things. Actually, so many wonderful things have happened here in the past in Tamil Nadu. Just yesterday you were telling me this pastimes of the deities. There are so many so many great devotees have been here and so so many temples and each temple there's so many wonderful pastimes of the Lord. So there is a great heritage of bhakti here. But somehow or other there's People don't even know that, I think. They, they, they were saying, he was saying that they think that if they see the tilak symbol, that's a symbol of inauspiciousness. They turned it around. It's a symbol of auspiciousness. If you see that, that's very auspicious, but they change it around. Just like Hitler took the swastika and turned it around. Maybe that's how he got a lot of power from that, maybe. We don't know. But it's a powerful symbol. You know that? I think the Indian devotees don't know. The symbol of the Nazi Germany was the swastika, but reversed. That's even now that's well known all over the Western world. People if you if someone wears that then the people are very upset, even now. In Russia must be also. If someone was to wear that, people would beat him, isn't it? They have such a bad feeling against it even now. Uh-huh. Where well, you did public program in Croatia? So you explain. Yeah, this is round the right way. Hitler turned it around. This is a symbol of aus- auspiciousness. But they didn't notice it was turned around. Very <laughs> so you see, people are taking the right thing and using it in the wrong way. So all the details, here proper gives the, in the purport, proper gives, people argue, well, you're also doing violence, you're killing the vegetables, the proper is pointing out, actually you're not. When you take fruit or a leaf from a tree, you're not killing it. And when you take rice, wheat, all different grains, they're harvested after the plant dies, actually. Taking milk from the cow is not killing. And even if you are killing, sometimes just like you take the you take the whole plant. But that also, that's not, that's also sinful, but not as sinful as killing a cow. But then if you offer to Krishna, then it's not sinful at all. It's beneficial for the cauliflower or whatever it might be, the jiva in the cauliflower body. But people don't know this. All the details you have to explain and so people can follow properly. So, that's what I've been doing here for the last, how long? Almost three weeks or something? Two and a half weeks. Working on my book on Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvatthaka. Very clearly showed that this is the right way, this is the right way, this is the right way. We should follow. We should follow the path of Bhakti Siddhanta, which is non different from Bhakti Vedanta, which is non different from Bhakti Vinod. Hare Krishna. Any question about this or comment? <laughs>